This is Twit. Harold White's proposed design, an ingenious reimagining of a drive known as the, and I'm going to kind of mangle the name, I'm afraid, uh, Al, Al Cubier. Um, he, he's a Mexican theoretical physicist, Miguel Alcub, Al, Alcubier. I was trying to pronounce it before the podcast, but now I forgot. Alcubier drive may eventually result in an engine that can transport a spacecraft to the nearest star. Okay, Leo, to the nearest star in a matter of weeks. Well, we need and, that because otherwise it oh, takes too long. Exactly. All without violating, violating Einstein's law of relativity. Dr. Harold uh, White at NASA's Johnson Space Center um, was putting together a presentation recently where he was going to talk about this problem. And his PDF is titled Warp Field Mechanics 101. And if we were able to build this, this would allow, this would transport a spacecraft to Alpha Centauri in two weeks. Perfect. Just even right. Though, even though the system, even though Alpha Centauri's um, system is 4.3 light years away. So we're talking about 4.3 light years in two weeks. And oh my God, that, I mean, now we're talking. Now we're cooking with gas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if we could generate this, the insane amount of energy required. Well, and that's the breakthrough. What happened was, um, is while preparing this report, he did a sensitivity analysis of the equations and he believes he found a way of dramatically reducing the hmm. amount of energy required. Hmm. Um, and, and so in his paper, it says it takes advantage of a quirk in the cosmological code that allows for the expansion and contraction of space-time and could allow for hyper-fast travel between interstellar destinations. Essentially, the empty space behind a starship would be made to expand rapidly pushing the craft in a forward direction. The passengers would perceive it as movement despite the complete lack of acceleration. Hmm. Um, and he said, in terms of the engine's mechanics, a spheroid object would be placed between two regions of space-time, one expanding and one contracting. A warp bubble would then be generated that moves space-time around the object effectively repositioning it. The end result is faster than light travel with, without the spheroid or spacecraft having to move with respect to its own local frame of reference. So, I mean, so essentially you, you, you create a bubble, this thing is in the middle and you, you sort of, you sort of rotate the bubble and the, the the craft moves through essentially is is pushed out of our normal space time constraints and is then able to travel without without inertia being a problem and without even something pesky as light speed being you know the the, the speed of light being a problem and just zip <laughs> wherever it wants zip. to go Woo. zip yeah so anyway uh We'll keep our eye on this, but I mean, it's re it's real. <laughs> we'll be and around they're, for they're, a while, right? <laughs> they're now doing that. Well, no, but it's see the energy the, the energy problem yeah. was what which just stopped everyone cold. I mean, it was absolutely it required an absolutely infeasible right. amount of energy, and it's been reduced by by m billions of orders of magnitude. I mean, it's like I mean, it's like been reduced if the if this if this new understanding is correct and and what they're actually doing now is building an interferometer to test the warp bubble theory because they now believe i mean other people have looked at it and nasa is look i mean nasa's guys have said wow this could work <laughs> and so they're going to start with an interferometer uh, in order to see whether they can actually create a warp bubble 
with this radically lower level of energy input required. And I, I haven't had a chance to read the PDF. I just found it this morning. I tweeted it. It's already, you know, in my Twitter feed. It's in the show notes. Um, so, yeah, I, wow. <laughs> oh, this would change everything. In our lifetime, you think? Nah. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. I think so. Oh, Leo. Um, <laughs> I, I was looking at this, you know, we, there was all of this, you know, JFK's 50-year uh, event in the last yeah, week. Yeah. I remember where I was on that Saturday Who morning. Who doesn't? Anybody alive does, of course. Yes. And, and I didn't really understand what was going on, but I knew from the expression on my dad's face that, uh, that oh, yeah. something really bad had happened. We'd been out sailing in the bay, in San Francisco Bay, um, all day. And so we were coming back. We, we 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 came back to the dock in Marin County, and my sister and I were hosing off the the sailboat. Dad had gone to the shore, and when he came back, someone on shore who had so so we we'd been out of touch with the news as a consequence of being sailing. And Dad found out when he was ashore and and walked back to the boat with. I mean, and I was like, Dad or Daddy, probably at the time. I think I was eight. Yeah, it would have been fifty years ago. What happened? Um, anyway, so uh, the point is that seeing the film from then, look how far we've come in 50 years, Leo. I, I think we forget how incredibly rapidly technology moves. I mean, it, you know, that was not long ago. That was 50 years. And but Steve, I know you. I know you're bullish about your, you know, vitamin D and your low carb. But I don't think we're going to last another 50 years. Do you think? Well. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I have a T-shirt that says "Future Centenarian." Yeah, right on, on. Daddy O. Absolutely. <laughs> I don't see myself getting to 107. But it's maybe not take 50 years. It's not going to take 50 years. Look at the Large Hadron Collider. I mean, that thing is science fiction. Have you seen the pictures of that? It's like we're building something like that. We could easily build a starship. All we need <laughs> is the warp bubble. And apparently, you know, that's just down the street. I now. say start building the starship and then, you know, just you know, if you build it, maybe the give bubble. It a big, give it a nice big engine room yeah. and we'll figure, we'll figure out, out, what out the to rest. Put in there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah.